Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming another ranking video. This is gonna be me ranking all the palettes I tried in the month of February. So just to kind of clarify, I do two types of ranking videos every month or I'm trying to. So I'm gonna rank the palettes I bought as part of my low buy, which is four palettes a month. And then I'm also gonna rank all the palettes I tried in the month of February because there are some palettes I picked up before my low buy started or there's palettes that carried over from previous months from my low buy or there's stuff that I pre-ordered that finally got in the mail. So. There's quite a mix of things, so if you're interested in seeing how I ranked these palettes, just keep watching. Okay guys, so in the month of February, I actually tried six palettes officially, and um, some other ones I'm still kind of working on here and there. There's so much happening, so I'm trying to do my best here as far as the things I'm ranking. The thing I'm ranking at number six is the Melt Millennial Pink Palette, or Pink's Palette, I don't know how to say it, um, but I actually don't even have that palette with me anymore because after I did my first impressions with it, I hated it so much, and most of you could tell that I hated it, and I had mentioned returning it and a lot of you said I should and I totally agree. I wasn't gonna hang on to something I wasn't 100% happy with and since I had the opportunity to go ahead and return it and get my money back, I totally did. So I ended up sending that back and I really just dislike it so much. So that is palette number six. I just had a terrible time with the formula and if you guys wanna see more of that, you should check out that video. Okay, at number five, I'm going to be throwing in the Jeffree Star Bloodless palette. So the thing is with this palette, I like it. I like the packaging. I like the concept. I think it's very, very fun. I filmed this look with this palette today and I've had a decent experience with this palette so far until I got to this red shade. And I remember watching my friend Brittany here on YouTube, Brittany Clark. I will go ahead and link her video on this. And she said this red shade, she doesn't know why it's even in this palette. She said it doesn't feel like Jeffree Star quality at all and I was like whoa that's kind of shocking because I really enjoyed like these four shades um, beauty sleep wet jewel sworn enemy and pink magic so I thought this one would be just as good and easy oh boy was I wrong so I totally agree with Brittany on that and that whole experience putting this eye look together really kind of made me a little bit sad so now this palette is kind of like moved down to the bottom a little bit and I do like it. I think it's definitely an experience, but if you're buying this for the purples, I think you can just buy like a ColourPop monochromatic palette, like their It's My Pleasure palette or the Lilac You A Lot palette, and your purple craving will be completely satisfied. I think you would want to buy this palette if you are a Jeffree Star fan, if you're curious about makeup, or you're like a huge makeup collector and you like collecting things with interesting packaging. But as far as like, do you need this? Is this the end all be all of purple palettes? Absolutely no for me on that one. So that is why I'm ranking that as a number five. So the next palette I'm going to rank is this guy. This is the Makeup Geek palette. This was actually palette number five of January. It was like the one that snuck in there that I shouldn't have bought, but I did because I got caught up in the whole, oh my gosh, rebranding, rebranding thing. So these shades are actually really nice. The only thing is I don't really find myself reaching for this little palette as much. Like it's, it's okay, it's good quality. Um, I like the shimmers actually a whole lot in this palette. They're very creamy and buttery and opaque, so that's really nice. Um, these three are the shimmer shades and then the rest are matte shades. So it's kind of a fun little curated palette because this was pre-set, so I just bought it um, because I was curious about what their formula was like and stuff like that. So I think it is nice, but it doesn't like wow me. You know, I was expecting like a little, little pizzazz here and there. And that's the thing too, I had mentioned it on my Instagram stories. It's like once you've tried as many eyeshadows as I have, you're in this like low buy, no buy place. It really has to be something so, so special for me to want it. And eyeshadow palettes still do that for me because you guys will see like shades regurgitated a hundred times over in my collection. I don't know, it's just like, maybe if this was in like a custom packaging with like 
a really cute like cover or it had like a name and a theme and like you know shade names well the shade names are on here but you know what I mean like there's it's like it's just a bunch of singles in like a um, generic packaging so it's very easy to sell me like a color story if it's like packaged up like even in this palette like you know what I mean so I think this one is just missing that little oomph and that would have been really really cool to see I already messed up sorry the melt palette was number seven the Jeffree Star palette was number six. Makeup Geek was five. This is number four. So this is the Tati Beauty palette. This one is wonderful quality. I think that if you are an everyday neutral glam chick, you like the ABH soft glam palette, this is going to be a palette for you. Now, I still haven't tried the sparkly shades because I'm kind of freaked out. This row is kind of not really that great. I know a lot of you told me that you like to use this with like a glitter glue. I don't really understand that um, because it's like either you use a matte or you use a shimmer. I don't really understand matte shades with shimmer in them. I know they do it. Um, Colourpop does it to help blend stuff, but I don't really think that makes it like this amazing thing that you should have. You know what I mean? So it's nice. It's very weighted. It's a nice, nice palette. I don't know what else to say. This is like these are like those like jeans that you just know always will look good on you so you just reach for them time and time again. That's what the Tati palette is. I so far have had a really good experience with the two formulas that I tried in that palette. So that is palette number four. This is going to be number three for me. This is the Natasha Denona Love Palette. Now, this was one where when I first saw all the promo pictures, I was like, I don't get it. You know what I mean? It just looks very like, eh, like, oh, it's nice. But like, is it going to like make my heart skip a beat? No, I had a really good eye look that I did with this. I was really happy with how it turned out. I was actually surprised at how it turned out. And I've used this a few times after that, but I haven't really been reaching for this. So because of that, like it's three it's like okay but does it make my heart like swell with joy and sing absolutely not but i'm not mad that i bought this like i was with the millennial pink palette if you know what i mean okay guys so my number two palette for the month of february i think you guys are gonna be kind of shook is the prelude palette by lime crime now i haven't bought anything from lime crime in a hot second i bought their venus palette the original one so so long ago and ended up giving it away to a friend because I did not really enjoy it and I haven't really looked at Lime Crime in a hot second because they were in so much controversy and blah 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 and then I've always seen them like in the drama channels and I know the CEO owner person finally stepped down and stuff like that so um, it seems like they are making their way out of that whole dark cloud but I'm I don't know what it was. This whole palette is just like speaking to me. I love this artwork on the cover. I like the gold trim. I like how it looks like very ancient and that's kind of their thing. So on here it says the prelude to our goddess Venus born from the god of the sky cast at sea triumphantly rising from the sea foam to rule over love and beauty. She created monumental waves filled with fantasy master your visionary mood and submerge into prelude and that's exactly how this makes me feel it makes me feel like oceany goddessy like smoky just beautiful beautiful tones i want to do a look with this palette on my youtube channel i haven't yet but i did do quite a few looks with this um for work and i did feature those on my instagram so if you guys follow me on instagram stories you would have seen the looks i created with this palette and i had so so much fun i just really love the shade cypress saturn sea foam and genesis like if that was a quad it would call to me and i just love those few neutral tones so I just think this is such a stunning color story for eight shades. I haven't been attracted to a tiny palette with such a concise color story in a long time, so that makes me really happy. The one complaint I do have is this is kind of a thick palette. They have like this weird boxy packaging and then the mirror kind of like fits in there. But I think that's kind of a good thing too because if you were to travel with it, the mirror like compresses the shadows, so I guess... That could be the reason why that is. My favorite thing that I 
bought or tried in February of 2020, of course. I had to give it to my Cleonade Stained Glass Collection Vibrant Multi-Chrome Shadows. I did pick up this palette from the sale as well, but I did pick up the Vibrant Multi-Chromes. And this is that first row. I did a swatch party video and featured one of the shades in an eye look, but I have really, really, really been loving those shadows. So I am so pumped that Cleonade decided to extend their already beautiful and vast multi-chrome collection. It's so good. It's probably one of the best collections as far as multi-chromes go that I've seen on the market. I originally bought the jeweled collection right here, these ones, and I've seen a lot of people like trying to figure out what collection they should get. I feel like the jewel shades you can kind of find in other places, but my favorites are definitely the vibrant and the um, glitter multi-chromes. Those are my favorite ones. So yeah, I had to give it to the, to the Cleonade multi-chrome. So yeah, that is it for ranking my eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the month of February. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what your favorite palette of February 2020 was. I would love to chat to you guys in the comments and I will see you guys in my next video soon. Bye!